Hi, hello, this is Techie Dude for you and in this second tutorial, we'll be getting into the image processing with OpenCV and Python and some basics function of OpenCV. So first of all, what are we going to see in this tutorial? First, jumping into OpenCV library, let us see what is, how an image is being represented in all image processing applications. Once we have seen that, we'll be looking to cv2.imread function, cv2.imshow function, cv2.wait key and cv2.destroy all windows function and one more function which I'll be discussing later. So first of all, let us take an image. Let me take an example of an image like this. So in all image processing applications, the images are represented as follows. So in an image, the image is being splitted into an M cross N grid where m corresponds to the number of rows and n corresponds to the number of columns so and each grid in this representation is called as a pixel so how do we represent that in an image processing application this is how we divide an image but how we actually process an image so i have an image which is of dimension m cross n where m is the number of rows and n is the number of columns so I'll be representing this image as an M cross N matrix where each element contains the intensity of the pixel at that particular position. For example, if I take the first row, second column, this element will be constant, will be having the pixel intensity of the second pixel. That is the first row, second pixel. So similarly, all images will be stored. Here it's a 5 cross 5 image, but in practical time, the M cross N will be in terms of thousands or something based on the clarity we use. So by this is the basic image representation, in all kind of image processing applications. So now let's jump into cv2.im read function. So as the name says, this function is used for reading an image. So how do you read an image from your computer? So the function name takes two arguments. The function takes two arguments, the file name and flag. So the first argument throughout the tutorial, I'll be using two colors for the representation of arguments where red corresponds to mandatory arguments and blue corresponds to optional arguments. So let's see into the first argument file name. File name is nothing but the path to the image. I'll be discussing that detail in short time. So next is flag so flag specifies the image format namely we have three image formats color grayscale and color image with alpha channel the default format is flag and i will specify on how to pass these flags into the function when we go into programming so the cv2.im read reads an image in 8-bit format 8-bit format in the sense that each intensity value is represented with the help of 8 bits so that the range of intensities vary from 0 to 2 power 8 minus 1 that is 0 to 255 with this uh, introduction to cv2.im read let's look into the first argument which is nothing but the file name so in the file name there are three categories and i will explain all the three categories and three cases actually so in the three cases and how to represent the file name so in the first case I have the source code and the image in the same folder. In such cases, it's enough to represent it as just the name of the image in double quotes. So this is the first case. The second case is that the uh, source code is in one folder and the image is in another folder, but both are in the same directory. In this case, both are there in the D directory. So in such cases, how I am going to represent the file name is that images slash image dot jpg. That is, I'm going to mention the path from that particular D directory. So the path from the particular D directory to the images, images and images dot jpg. So I am going to specify it as images par image dot jpg. This is the second case. In the third case, the source code and the image are in different directories. In such cases, I have to mention the entire path. See images slash image.jpg. 
it's it will not create any problem even if you mention the entire path for all the three cases but for this particular case you have to uh, particularly that is compulsorily mention the file name entire file name when the image is in a different directory and the source code is in a different directory with this let us jump into the programming so let me go to my ideal me go to file and open a new file so let's import the opencv library into the uh, python document and let's import numpy also so first in our case i'm going to read an image which is in the same directory or i'm going to say the source code the same directory as same folder where my image is so let me specify a variable image cv and i'm going to read the image with cv2.im read and i'm going to specify the image name I specified my image name so i said that there are three arguments for the flag sorry three arguments for the flag and those arguments are cv2 dot image underscore color for reading a colored image color image and this is the default so it's you can also specify one in that flag the second uh, argument is cv2 dot image underscore grayscale this is for reading the image in grayscale format and for this you could specify zero the next thing is that reading the image with alpha channel cv2 dot image underscore unchanged this is for reading the image with alpha channel for this you could specify just minus one so let's look into all the different varieties of the flag or the different instances of the flag in the next case i'm going to read in the image in the same image in grayscale format cv2 dot im read image.jpg comma zero and for unchanged with alpha channel i'm going to read it as cv2.im read image.jpg comma minus one so i have successfully read the image so how you display the image now for displaying the image we have a function called cv2.im show function which takes in two arguments namely uh, the title name and which is a string and the image which is a numpy array so these are these two arguments are mandatory so we have another function we are going to use cv2 dot wait key and cv2 dot destroy all windows so these are the two uh, these are the two uh, three functions we are going to use cv2 dot wait key is for uh, cv2 dot wait key waits until you press a key in the keyboard it takes in one positional argument which is time in millisecond but we actually don't use it and also you could wait until you get a specified key is pressed and cv2 dot destroy all windows is mentioned is used to destroy all the windows so let's look into let's uh show each and every image let me first show the colored image which is stored in the image variable so let me wait until i press some key and 
this is cv2 dot i am show grayscale image as gray comma grayscale gray gray is the variable where i have stored the grayscale image and let me wait until a key is pressed and let's show the unchanged image also sorry and let me wait for a key to be pressed and once we have analyzed all three let me destroy the windows Let me save it in the same folder where I have saved my image. So let me save it in the same folder. Let me save it as image reading. So I have saved my image. Now let's run the program so not run the program go here and give run module or you can use the shortcut key f5 so once it runs so this is the colored image which i have loaded into and when i when until I press a key, it reminds in the same window. When I press a key, it executes the next line. So this is the grayscale image. And you could see the title name at the top. So this is the grayscale image. And this is the unchanged image. Unchanged image and color image both will be kind of the same. But the dimensions when you check it to the dimension each pixel will be represented with the help of four in terms of unchanged image that is b g r and the alpha channel in terms of only color it will be represented only in terms of b g and r this is and when i press a key all the windows get destroyed and we have successfully compiled our program so next thing let me introduce another function which is cv2 dot im right this is used to save an image it takes in two arguments which are nothing but file name a string and the image which is numpy array so the file name seems the follows the same as for cv2.im read so in order to save the image in the same folder as your direct as your source code just write cv2.im write the image which you have to save let me save my gray scale image in jpg format and just given the image name so let me save the program and run the program so this is the colored image grayscale image this is the unchanged image and i have successfully saved my program so let's go into the folder and check whether the image is saved or not so i've jumped into the folder so i have my gray.jpg over here let the image open So this is the grayscale image which we have saved. So that's it for today's tutorial. Don't forget to like the video and if you have any doubts just put it in the comment section and I will respond to it and I will upload the today's code into my github page and if you want you could refer from that. My github page link is in the description section.